What was the best? You have no power here moment you have ever seen. I used to work for a super cunty manager when I worked at McDonald's. This guy was horrible to us. He was constantly bullying us, shit talking us to customers, and doing everything in his power to make us miserable. Well, so many people complained about him that he ended up getting fired. New manager was great. He was super chill and understanding with us all. A couple weeks after he took over, the old douchebag comes in and starts talking about how terrible the store looks, how our service is shittier than ever, and how much this store needs him. The new manager looked at him and said if you don't leave, then the cops are gonna make you. When the douchebag didn't move, new awesome manager stuck to his guns and called the cops. The douchebag is no longer allowed on any McDonald's property in the city and has a restraining order against him. Well, this might be a long one. I grew up around a mother with dissociative disorder as well as narcissism. She was addicted to opiates as far back as I can remember, and would do anything to get them, and I mean anything. Growing up, it wasn't rare for her to have a tantrum during one of her highs and beat the shit out of me, break me down by picking apart every little thing she knew I was afraid or self-conscious of, and actively sabotage my relationship with my father and siblings. She would be up for days at a time, pass out standing up with her eyes glassed over and back hunched, and when she festered once again start moving and otherwise destroying everything in the house. There were times where I'd leave and the house would be clean, and come home and it would look as though a pissed off tornado had run through the house i.e. broken glass, animal feces, dirty clothes, roaches, empty pill bottles, ground up pill residue, and other miscellaneous things littering the house. On particularly bad nights she would hallucinate, and during those times it wouldn't be uncommon to find pools of her blood on the ground from running through glass. I remember being up for days at a time because her and my father would scream at each other for days at a time without stopping, actively trying to get me to pick one side or the other even if it meant barging into my room at 4am to begin their screaming match where I could watch. She manipulated me, abandoned me at times in the middle of nowhere when she'd meet up with her various sugar daddies, she was still with my dad during this, and never once apologized during her brief moments of mental clarity. If anything, she would blame everything but herself. In her mind she was infallible. Money was always a big issue since she couldn't work in such a state. She sold some of her pills, yes, but ultimately those funds were used to buy more drugs anyway. Because of this, we were homeless frequently, without power and water for literally years at a time, and barely ever had any food. It was almost every night I went to sleep with the only thing I'd have eaten that day being a school lunch. On weekends, sometimes I didn't eat at all. The rest of my family had no clue this was happening. During the summer when I was 16, my aunt whom I hadn't talked much with since I was a lot younger got in touch. She asked if I'd like to come to stay with them in Texas for a few weeks during the summer. Of course I said yes, and I was absolutely ecstatic. I didn't bother asking my parents since I'd be very much surprised if they even noticed I was gone so they were unaware. My aunt drove up all the way to Iowa and stayed the afternoon with us. My parents seemed to lack the cognition to recognize she was even there out of the blue so they didn't come out of their room. As I stated before would happen frequently, when she arrived our house was fairly clean. We left for a bit to go get food, and when we returned the tornado had already passed. Instead, I tiptoed around the debris and started packing my things without a word. This deeply unsettled her, and ultimately she asked me if I was safe where I lived. I said yes, as it was all I had ever known. She told me that what she saw frightened her, and she wanted me to come live with her in Texas. Thinking that she was joking, I brushed it off. After a few days down there though, I knew I had to do it. They showed me love, compassion, and care that I'd never even known existed prior to this and shook me to my core. So we decided, I was going to get emancipated from my parents and move in with them. Ultimately, this involved sitting in a courthouse across from my parents and their lawyer. The judge asked why I wanted to leave, and I explained the above. I expressed the love and compassion I'd experienced for the first time in my life, and that I wanted to, for once, live in peace. Their lawyer rebutted, to me, it seems as though you have no respect for your parents. Is it because of their financial situation? It looks as though you're attached to the perks of living in a family that makes a reasonable amount of money, and not that you want to leave because they're unfit parents. My mother and father joined in, hooting and hollering actively trying to break me down as they have so many times before. I let him speak. I let them speak, and I held my tongue until it was my turn. They tried to goad me on, tried to break me as they had so many times before, but I wouldn't let them. Finally, the judge asked me to speak. With as level a stare as I could muster, I looked at mother, my father, and their lawyer across from me and said if you're asking me if I have no respect for my parents, then you are correct. However, to say it's simply financially motivated is incorrect. I no longer have respect for them because they have. As I was nearly finished, 
my mother, as she had so many times in the past began to squirm and scream at me from across the table. He's lying the little, is you, until the judge slammed his gavel down and cut the room, my mother staring up at him in complete and utter disbelief. I looked at her, keeping the tears I knew were right behind the corner at bay and said, for once in your life, for once in my life, behave as an adult. You can't stop me by simply yelling over me anymore, you have nothing to hold over me now. You can do nothing, as I spoke, the judge motioned to his officer who moved towards my mother. Her expression still frozen in complete bewilderment as the officer aggressively told her to get up out of her chair and escorted her out of the room. The judge looked to me, my aunt, my father, and his lawyer with one sweeping glance and then spoke. I am sorry that you have to deal with this for so long young man. There's nothing more that you or anyone else needs to say. You deserve to live a normal life as a normal kid and it's obvious to me now that your parents are unfit to produce that kind of environment. You will go back to Texas with your aunt, and we will regularly have our social workers in touch to check in on how you are doing. Make the most of this second chance, good luck young man. Adjourned, though the bang of his gavel was the only noise that permeated the room, all I could hear was the ringing in my ears. My father and his lawyer were escorted out of the room and the tears I had held back all this time came gushing out like a tidal wave. It's been seven years since that day and I am happy to say that I've managed to grow up and become a well-adjusted adult. I have a great career, great friends, and an amazing girlfriend. I've been in therapy ever since we got back to Texas, and I no longer have trouble sleeping or terrible bouts of anxiety and depression as I used to. Life is good. TL, Dr. Mother is a narcissist with dissociative personality disorder addicted to opiates. Father kind of just went with the flow and didn't really do much. Aunt came down to take me to Texas, saw how shit everything was and asked me if I wanted to live with them. After some time I said yes, went to court against my parents under the pretense of emancipation, and got to stare them down and lay out all the trauma, pain, and fear they've caused me. My mother was escorted out of the room when she tried to cut over me, and the judge sided with us and I was emancipated. Now I'm doing really well. Thank you for listening to another B-Town Reddit Stories episode. Hit the subscribe button and check out our channel for more stories. Let us know your opinion about this topic in the comments.